Well, you see a big smile on my face because today I'm extremely happy. It's a weekend and this is the first weekend in a long time that I've had um, a whole weekend to actually work right here. We're not going to any conferences, we're not going to any training, and uh, largely most of America is self-quarantined. So we're going to make the most of it today. But the reason I'm so happy is because we're going to knock out a bunch of things all at the same time. And if my voice seems a little bit weird, I got some kind of bug. No, it's not the bad one. At least I don't think. Anyway, I got some kind of bug. It's messing with my voice a little bit, but um, I'm great. Sun's shining, birds are chirping. Just rained yesterday, which is a good thing for what we're about to do today. We have, if you'll look behind me, we have a bunch of these piles of thicket. And they're viney, they're thorny, they're nasty, and they're prickly. So we, we got to do something with them. Well, since they're all dried up and everything, we don't exactly have any means to, um, to really handle it other than the way we're going to do today. And at the same time, just like most things in permaculture, we're going to try to combine a few other things with it. So we're going to burn that stuff. Not exactly the, the, the method of choice on a permaculture farm, but today we're going to make an exception. Because at the same time we're doing that, we're going to use this barrel here that the previous owners decided to leave for us. And we're going to make some biochar out of it. Now we've never done that before, so it's an experiment. It'll either be biochar or charcoal or dust if we do it wrong. So what we're going to do is take this barrel. We got it at a different part of the property. We got it down at a place where we're not really all that concerned if we turn some of this clay into terracotta because of the heat. Because the area we're looking, we're standing at right now, we have in our we the area we're working we're standing on right now is going to be something of a landing or a immediate a medium driveway i guess you could say it'll be a place where you can drive up this driveway turn around do whatever you got to do and drive back out so i'm not really all that concerned because i don't plan on growing anything here outside of just the rocks and the underlayment that'll be here so if i gotta burn this is the place to do it so all we're going to do really in a nutshell is drill some holes in the side of this barrel we're going to take all that thicket we're going to line it around this barrel we're going to burn the thicket load this thing up with um, some wood that William has cut and um, we'll see what happens hopefully it makes biochar like I said it makes charcoal worst case scenario we get nothing and we'll let you know how that turns out All right, so it's a day later. We burned all the brush, and um, now this stuff is turned into biochar. And the difference between biochar and charcoal is how heavy it is. It should be real light and still look like the piece of material that you put in there. So this still looks like a chunk of wood, and you can still see the bark and all that stuff, and it should break pretty easily. So some people use biochar and it doesn't work out in their garden or anything like that. They don't see any benefits of the biochar in their garden. And that's because they haven't activated it first. So the benefit of biochar is that it's basically an apartment complex for a bunch of microorganisms. But if you don't fill it full of microorganisms before you use it, then you're not really benefiting from it at all. So one of the ways you could activate it is by feeding it to your pigs. And whenever it goes through their digestive system, it then is filled with microorganisms or you can feed it to your chickens um, or you could also put it in your compost like whenever you start your 18 day compost or whatever you could throw this in there you want to grind it up first to increase the surface area and then you can throw this in there and then you're basically filling up the apartment complexes with microorganisms if you don't do that then it's not doing much other than adding carbon to the soil and helping with a little bit of water retention. 
So the process of making biochar is that you fill up a container and you want to make sure it's an airtight container. And then you drill a couple of holes in the bottom side of your container. Since we laid this over, we drilled the holes over here on this side. And they're only half inch holes and there's only six of them. So you want to heat this container up to about 500 degrees Celsius for five hours and you want to limit the amount of oxygen that's in there. You'll know you're doing it right whenever you see little flames shooting out of the holes underneath and you know you can stop burning whenever you start seeing smoke just come out of those holes. And then you um, basically cover up the sides with dirt so it's airtight, let it cool down overnight and then the next day it should be good to go should look like this so unless you're living in the tropics you shouldn't really go out of your way to create biochar because it's not really going to be that beneficial to you the reason it's so beneficial in the sub in the tropics is because 90 percent of their life is above the soil their soils are typically pretty crappy and they don't have much life within the soil so what this does is provide homes for the microorganisms in the soil so you can actually have life in your soil so if you're not living in the tropics it's not worth going out of your way to make biochar unless you're already burning stuff so now we're going to give some to our pigs so they can digest it and then they can poop in the bedding that we're eventually going to turn into uh biochar or that we're going to eventually turn into compost okay so you saw the process and um it's really not all that difficult. It was our first time ever doing it, and it turned out, I'd, I'd, I'd call this a success. Now, there are other methods out there to do this, like taking a smaller barrel and putting it inside the bigger barrel and setting the stuff in the big, bigger barrel on fire. Um, like I said, it's just a technique. Um, good for us, it actually worked out. But see, one of the other benefits of this biochar is... Like William said, it'll, it'll be activated as, as it goes through the digestive tract of these pigs. But also what's in here, these trees, remember these trees bioaccumulate a bunch of minerals. I mean, for the longest time, farmers would have bags of, um, of things they got out of their fireplace, out of the ash that they got out of their fireplaces, and they would typically um, have these bags let some of that stuff out as they were sowing their crops. And that's one way in which they would put these minerals back in. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. But these pigs, they need minerals. If you'll go back and listen to the interview with Pork Ryan, he explains how important that is. Um, let's say you don't have minerals. Let's say in a time like right now where you may not have the benefit of being able to go out to the store and go get this stuff. And let's say you live on a homestead or even a small homestead and you just happen to have some some um, some trees, some logs laying around, and maybe you're looking for something to do with it. Well, these guys, they may not get to it right now, but they will get to it. Let's see if these guys go at it the way Joel Salatin's pigs do. Okay, so the whole notion of feeding charcoal to these pigs actually came from Joel Salatin. Man's a genius on more, in more ways than one. Um, I can't remember, but I remember sitting through a class that I, that I took from him, and I can't remember how much charcoal he said his pigs will actually go through. Well, this is biochar, and they need the minerals. So, um, wow, I, I, it's a win-win situation. So we're at a time where we need things to do in this, and all this extra time, and these guys need minerals. And um, it's all getting done. So I can't think of a wonderful project to do if you're needing a project to do or you just, you're in need of having charcoal to feed to your pigs or chickens or whatever the case may be. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Hopefully you can hear me from all this rain inside the barn. This is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy from Permapastures Farm, and we'll see you next time.